It's been over 30 years, but Beetlejuice is back. The ghost with the most is back. The juice is on the loose yet again. And we have Michael Keaton returning in that beloved role, along with the return of Winona Ryder and Catherine O'Hara. Uh, Jeffrey Jones at, <clears throat> at scheduling conflicts and behind the director's chair. We have Tim Burton back once again. And it was a triumphant return. This is one of the big hits of the year, one of the huge box office smash hit whatevers. Uh, so it's it's been a, a big cause for celebration for, for Beetlejuice fans, for, for everybody who's loved that original movie uh, for, for all these years now and have been craving a follow-up. And it, it's always a little tricky, I guess, with sequels that come this late like we're talking decades decades later it's it's always kind of a gamble and, and and you know even if they turn out to be somewhat good they're never as good as the original they never really compare and i will say i mean up front i'll say this is a good movie i enjoyed it but i mean you can't really hold it up to the original Beetlejuice. It was just such a fantastic movie, such an iconic movie. Something that, I mean, really announced to the world the the unique style of Tim Burton. And I, I know we had Pee Wee before that, but that kind of felt almost uh, more of, I don't know, Pee Wee's world and sensibilities mixed with Tim Burton. So you could definitely see it. But Beetlejuice, on the other hand, was, was purely, purely Tim Burton, and it was just this great, exciting movie, so uh, visually different, so tonally different, so much so that, I mean, like, really, how else can you categorize that except, I don't know, I guess we'll say it's a family-friendly movie, even though, I, I don't know, if, like, you know, little toddlers would be watching this, but uh, with, with Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, the sequel, I think they leaned a little bit more towards sort of a cartoony vibe to it, which is fine, I think. Uh, and, you know, they have a lot of fun with it. Uh, I've, I've seen the movie twice now. Uh, first, when it like very first came out, I, I had to go see it immediately. I was, I was very excited for it. Uh, and actually, just recently, I went to see it again, uh, this time taking my godson, my six-year-old godson, to see the movie, to test it out on him. That, that was his first... A movie at a theater, which is kind of cool, and he had a good time. He had a fun time, so it, it definitely works as a family-friendly movie. I can I can attest to that. Um, and anyone who kind of grew up with the original also knows the cartoon, which was a, a fairly well-known cartoon, fairly uh, popular and enjoyed. I, I I watched it a lot when I was a kid, and. A lot of people have said this is almost like a big screen adaptation of that cartoon series, which which is kind of true. Uh, it, it definitely has that kind of feel to it, uh, but but still with a, a lot of the stuff that, that made the original work. And I mean, obviously, uh, the biggest factor being Michael Keaton playing this role, who you can tell he's having a fucking blast. Uh, he fits right back into the role. Like, it's an old suit that's been just <laughs> waiting in the closet for, for all these years. He's back. He's, he's, he hasn't lost a, any amount of luster playing this, this character. He's absolutely wonderful. Um, so it's, it's, it's fun in the sense that it's really kind of like this reunion movie. Uh, and, you know, just, just as kind of like a standalone movie, I, I guess y y you kind of have to take it for what it is. Because there's, you know, there, there are a lot of plates spinning with this plot like it's it's very kind of you know you step back from it it's this, this carefully conceived kind of thing where like everything just has to work exactly this way or else nothing makes any goddamn sense in this movie and so you think about it a little bit you, you want to describe this movie to someone you, you you end up like not really talking about the movie but more more about the plot points like the original film as outlandish as it was and you know this, this morbid fantasy of a movie about the afterlife uh, with with all 
the, the sight gags, with all the humor that comes with it. Uh, very kind of, you know, it's a different kind of plot, uh, but it still is, in a sense, it's, it's a straightforward enough movie where we do follow the Alec Baldwin and, and Gina Davis characters, the Maitlands, and, and they kind of guide us very slowly but surely through this plot uh, as, you know, we, we learn more about how this underworld kind of works. Meanwhile, I mean, there aren't really that strict of rules, but whatever rules apply particularly to, to the plot. Um, and we do, I mean, like with this sequel, we kind of have that little refresher where it's not really involving any main characters of the movie. Like we have this, kind of like within the first 15 minutes or so of the movie, we have this, like a French character, some guy basically in the background of the movie who falls through a manhole and dies and goes into the underworld and the whole waiting in line kind of deal and we're like okay yeah I get it I get it so you don't I mean you just need the refresher I guess uh, but for anyone who may have not seen the original a long time or maybe didn't see the original at all it, it serves as something kind of crucial where it, it does introduce this uh, very you know important part of the the structure of the plot um, and where the the main plot gets rolling is that we do have Winona Ryder back. She's playing Lydia Dietz once again, all grown up, of course. Uh, she still has her gift of being able to communicate uh, with uh, the dead, being strange and unusual herself. And she's, <laughs> I guess, kind of uh, used that to her advantage for once and has become a, a host for this paranormal investigation kind of show where... I mean, you don't see many of these with live audiences, but this one does. Uh, she has a producer, played by Justin Thoreau, who is also her, her boyfriend. We can kind of sniff him out right away as kind of a douchebag taking advantage of her. And she's still tortured after all these years of, of, of her encounter with, with Beetlejuice and you know all the, all the mayhem he caused within her family. And she's seeing visions of him, but we, we learn those are very uh, calculated visions that Beetlejuice himself is bringing to the surface through through his mischievous ways, through his whole network of being a, a bio-exorcist specialist, you know, and, and all that. Um, but what sets off further plot elements is that uh, her father once played by Jeffrey Jones has died so she, she reunites with her stepmother Delia played by Catherine O'Hara she grabs her, her own daughter and that's played by Jenna Ortega who I guess needs no introduction big big star everyone knows her as Wednesday Adams from the Scream movies and we, we get a little refresher on what's kind of been going on in the last 30 years. So Lydia was once married, had, had this child, and that, that became uh, Astrid, Astrid Dietz. Um, and unfortunately, her, her husband died tragically. And Astrid resents Lydia because for someone who can talk to the dead, and, you know, uses it on her show, she's never tried to communicate with Astrid's father. So, so why is this? And the armchair detective in the audience kind of thinks, well, okay, maybe there's a twist here. Maybe the father isn't really dead. Uh, well, no, he's dead. Uh, they find him later in the afterworld. Uh, so, so there's that, and basically uh, everyone comes together to, to go to the old house that we know from the original film, have this big funeral. Of course, Delia, she turns this into her own kind of art form, this theater of grief, and it's very amusing and very on brand with the character that she has played in, in the original film. Uh, she's wonderful. I, like, I gotta say, I mean, Catherine O'Hara, she's just fucking amazing. Uh, steals every scene she's in, just about. Uh, but of course, waiting in the wings, we do have Beetlejuice. And kind of the conflict in, in his story is, just while all of this is happening, just really just coincidentally, 
uh, it would turn out we have to explain a little bit more. Let's stop and explain some more backstory here. Uh, Beetlejuice once had a wife. Uh, back when he was alive, during the time of, of the Black Death, the, the terrible plague that wi wiped out, you know, a third of the population. She was part of this cult and wanted to enact this sacrifice with Beetlejuice when he was a mortal. But <laughs> in poisoning him and him finding it out, he takes one last uh, chop at her with an axe, and they both go into the underworld together, so her plans are thwarted. Uh, so she's cut up to pieces and put in storage, but somehow just at, at this exact time she, she has come back, all her body pieces come together, and an amusing little scene that also includes Danny DeVito, but she's, you know, this, she's this evil kind of succubus kind of thing, and that is Monica Bellucci, Bellucci uh, playing Beetlejuice's wife, uh, and she's on her way to get Beetlejuice, and that's, this is like throughout the whole movie that she's just hunting down anyone who can give her information, where's Beetlejuice, where's Beetlejuice, um, and she's on his trail. And on her trail, another another plot point we got to put in here is this uh, hotshot detective cop of the underworld, Wolf Jackson, played by Willem Dafoe, who in his mortal life was an actor who maybe took things a little too seriously, got a grenade to the head, and that's how he ended up there. Uh, he, he's on the case, too, and he's interrogating Beetlejuice about it. Dolores is, is her name. And that's kind of the ticking clock of, of the plot, right? So, <laughs> while we're doing this whole grieving thing, it just so happens that Justin Theroux's character, he's Rory, he wants to marry Lydia on Halloween night at the witching hour. So there's a ticking clock there too, and also, also during all another plot point, uh, we have Astrid, who's kind of gone off on her own and found this boy and started you know, a little you know crush on him, a little relationship with him, but it turns out he is a ghost, and he's trying to swap her mortality with him so that he can push her into the underworld and he can be alive again because he's evil and bad. So he brings her to the underworld. Lydia's gotta save her. What What is the only way she can do that? Of course, she has to say those three magic words, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And he's back and he's helping her and he wants to marry her all these years later. He, he's, he's very devoted, if nothing else, to, to Lydia. Uh, so that's basically the, the movie. I mean, you can't, I guess you can't really like say this in one sentence. You gotta like, kinda like explain all this shit. Um, which, I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, giggling a little bit or whatever because it's kind of like oh we got all this fucking plot shit going on but it's fine it works fine the plates are spinning it all works despite everything it's just it is a little you know plot heavy maybe unnecessarily so uh maybe they could have focused on one thing over another but i can say that the movie's never uninteresting it's never boring there's always kind of something going on going on there there is always something that's furthering the plot, and they're able to do it in interesting ways. Like even in certain pieces of exposition where we have the whole uh, side story of, of how Lydia's father died, they do it in this kind of amusing claymation segment, which is kind of cool to see. Uh, and the whole explanation of uh, Dolores is, is done in this you know kind of old like. I don't know, Japanese New Wave kind of filmic way. I, I don't know. It, you know, it's 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 good. It's 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 entertaining uh, as as a movie, and it's it's very funny. And Michael Keaton is is great in the role. Winona Ryder great in the role. Catherine O'Hara, Jenna Ortega. Everybody's really good. 
in, in the role. And, you know, I, I do have criticisms of the movie. Like, you kind of think, well, maybe they, they could have blended things together in, in a more effective way. Like, the whole thing with the ghost kid romanticizing Jenna Ortega, that kind of sideswipes you a little bit as this whole little strange side plot. But it's so, it is, that's the thing, it's necessary. You need that in order to get the connection to Lydia and Beetlejuice. Uh, so, so you just wonder if they could have done that uh, a little bit more, I don't know, organically, uh, a little bit more in a way that uh, meshes with, with the other conflict we have going on in the film, like with Dolores and her whole thing of searching for Beetlejuice and sucking the souls out of everyone she encounters and all that. Maybe it could have blended together better. Maybe her and the ghost boy could have teamed up somehow. I don't know. Um, maybe the Rory character, Justin Theroux, he could have had like a, a, a different kind of involvement because he feels like outside of everything, but he becomes involved in the whole grand finale where Beetlejuice is trying to marry Lydia in, in the church. I mean, it's like basically the same ending as the original movie. He's trying to marry her, but, uh, you know, maybe he succeeds, maybe he doesn't. Well, he doesn't, whatever. Spoilers, I guess. But, uh, you know, it, every, everything's so disconnected, but it, it feels that it, it comes together in a way that, I don't know, it doesn't doesn't feel as natural as it could and uh with with the whole Dolores character well for one thing I mean I one one kind of criticism I've seen pop up is that technically maybe you could like remove this character entirely and the movie would still stand the same just about which is kind of true uh but she's really the only part of the movie that makes you feel like there is kind of like this, I don't know, like uh, an urgency, right? Like time-wise, besides bringing in the whole Midnight Wedding thing, uh, that it is leading up to something. But then when it does lead up to it, it's like, really, this is this is it? Like, you would expect a little bit more of a, a struggle in the end, because, I mean, she, she pops up, says hello, and, you know, he's a good lawyer, he's like, oh, you look good, uh, you look real put together and really she, she's she's defeated in like two seconds because you know Astrid figures things out uh, and she's killed by a sandworm along with Rory who I don't know uh, does he deserve the same fate as the evil soul sucking succubus yes he's an asshole we can all figure that out I mean that that's just something we instinctively know as the audience from the very beginning and then we find out later yes he is using Lydia uh and he, he just wants to, to marry her basically for money. And he's a huge asshole, sure. Uh, but I don't know. Could they have made him a little bit worse? Like, could, I don't know. Could he have had some plan where he's like, I don't know, aha, after midnight, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to poison Lydia and I'll have all her money or something like, I don't know. I don't know. Make him a little bit more evil or have maybe have in some way have him maybe team up with Dolores. I don't know how, you know, the practicality of that, how that would work, but something, I don't know. So, despite all of this, I mean, it, it, it's messy, but it still works. You know what I mean? Uh, it, 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 it didn't need to, to have all of, all, all of these elements of the plot, but despite all of it, it, it works, which is just the, the most baffling thing of all about this movie. Um, so, I mean, I can complain till the cows come home, but it's, it's a functional plot. It's a fairly solid plot that, that all comes together, and characters have their good moments. Uh, they have their, their standout scenes, uh, and it's just, a, you know, it, it must... It, it feels bad to me that this seems almost, like, calculated in a way. It's like, yes, we'll have... You know, people who want the OG Beatles, just we have this. But then uh, for the new viewers who just can't get enough Wednesday, of course we have Jenna Ortega, who I, I have no doubt in my mind. She's one of the big reasons why this movie is a box office success. She, she's a very, very big draw. Um, and we have, you know, this, this little side plot with Willem Dafoe just, just to kind of tie it all together a little bit. 
uh, and and he's really good. Just give it a little bit of credibility in in a sense uh, that maybe it wouldn't have. I don't know, uh, but it, it's just amazing to me that I, I guess they originally Warner Brothers, the studio, they wanted to release this direct to streaming on I don't know what HBO Go or Max or whatever the fuck they call it now, uh, which is amazing to me because now it's at, at least. It's, it's got to be in the top five grossing movies of, of the year at this point, um, which is, is astounding because as seemingly anti-art and just incompetent sometimes, it seems, with, with Warner Brothers. You know, they'll erase whole movies for tax purposes, which is disgusting. Uh, somehow they'll just accidentally trip on to getting the most, you know, the highest grossing movie, like they did with Barbie. So, so somehow their their incompetence is, is all evened out by, by doing that. So that's just wild to me. But, I mean, despite all that, with the calculations and, and all that, uh, really at, at the heart of why I think this movie was a success is the fact that this is a beloved character. I mean, anybody who's been paying attention to... Halloween spooky season the last 30 plus years knows what a big deal Beetlejuice is and knows that a new movie is something people will want to see and it was and despite all its faults I really enjoyed the movie I, I felt very entertained by it again it has the distinct Tim Burton styled to it, tonally and visually. I mean, I, I love one thing I love about the original movie is the psych eggs, and this one has some really good psych eggs, too. Really funny. Uh, great new stuff. I mean, I, I've talked this whole time. I haven't talked about Bob. Bob, the underling of Beetlejuice, who is the, the unsung hero of the movie. Then all the other underlings escape. Did they resolve that? I don't, I don't think so. But Bob was great. Justice for Bob. And the baby, the, the Beetlejuice baby. Just a crazy addition. Like, really no relevance to the plot or anything like that. Just for, you know, a, a shock joke. But so wonderful. Uh, so, like, disgusting. It's like it's this mix of the, the baby from Train Spotting and It's Alive. It's, it's great. And, like, this antithesis to the whole. Let's take a, a known character, make it a baby, make it cute. Baby Yoda, sell some merchandise kind of thing. Well, I don't know. This revolting, flatulent, violent little shit. Um, if anyone, if any kid wants that doll, I mean, they must be demented or something. I want one. I want one real bad. Um, but, uh, well, on the subject of that, too, like, the ending of the movie. The ending is so good, too. Uh, where, I mean, like, once you kind of hear, as a horror fan, obviously, once you hear the Carrie music, uh, you kind of know there's going to be this, like, shock ending, like this homage to Carrie almost, uh, with, with the baby included, and it's just, it's so great. Uh, so I, I, I love the ending. You know, overall, I, you know, they, they, they did a good job. You know, it's, I, I, I can't, I can't say too bad about it because it, it does work despite everything so I mean it's it really is kind of the, the perfect October movie and it is something that I think everybody can enjoy because as I mentioned I, I brought my, my godson to see it and you know uh, there were some other considerations to you know take him to see a movie I, I'm sure I could have gone to see some stupid cartoon kids movie that I wouldn't like and he wouldn't care one way or another but Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice I think that was a good choice I'm, I'm very uh, proud to have been there for his first movie and, and I think this that's a good one I think this is a good one a, a good uh, step into the movie going world I guess, I don't know but Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice gets a thumbs up from me I'll I'll gladly put it on a double bill with with the original film and I would gladly gladly go see Beetlejuice 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 absolutely it's 
So, a Halloween tradition heightened with a new series entry, one that I'm sure will be maybe not equally beloved, but in very good company with the original film and watched and enjoyed for years to come. Let's just hope it's not another 30 years between sequels. And that should be it. That should be it for my uh, horror movie, scary, spooky movie, Halloween movie, marathon of 2024. Thank you all very much for watching along with me and watching my reviews throughout this month. I really appreciate it. Be sure to comment, rate, subscribe, all the good stuff. I'll see you next time, and until then, stay scared.